All right, this is our spring semester and our first exercise of the 2024 spring semester and our first video. And we are going to jump into our first exercise. So we're going to find it under unit modules. <clears throat> we could also find it in the sidebar if I do a student view under modules. But this is kind of the template, very visually boring way to do it. So I prefer this nice little animated flag type design. We already went through all the first day stuff. That's unit one. If you're missing anything in your grades, it's in that first unit. So go through there and just complete those tasks. Now we are starting unit two. Some units take a long time. Some take a short time. This unit includes exercise one. And that's about it. And this will be due next class. It has three sections. One is just the introduction to it, which you have read through. Next, I just give you some past examples. I also always give you examples at the, the heading of the assignment. And so I can get there three different ways to the next page. I can click on the little button icon here. I can click on the icon here in the menu. Or I can scroll down to the bottom and click on Next. This is just to make sure you guys see everything in these modules. Uh, because you're in class and I'm demoing them to you, you don't ever really need to look at these again. But if you ever miss uh, an assignment introduction, go through the module. It should give you the background information on it. So here we see lots of different original compositions, but what they all have in common is they're based on black line art. And sure enough, this is a project that is our first exercise. It is a compositing introduction, but I call it a line art jumble. If we want to see more examples, we can go to this folder. This is where, at the end of semester, students put their favorite pieces. And you'll see very different types of line art, right? whether it's from comics, whether it's from clip art, whether it's from illustrations, whether it's robots or Winnie the Pooh or Looney Tunes. And you'll see that some of them are in color. So after we do the black line art, we'll have an option for adding color, original color. And these are some of my past instructor examples. Calvin and Hobbes is a favorite. Now there are two different themes I work between. One is on a band book theme. Can anyone guess what this book is? Lord of the Rings, very good. And then the other is a favorite cartoon. I have lots of favorite cartoons. Calvin and Hobbes is one of them, right? Garfield is one of them. Uh, He-Man is one of them, <laughs> you know, all of these different ones. So we're, we're going to do the favorite cartoon theme. And you're only required to do it in black and white. But if you want to do the optional color, I'll be demoing that as well. You never need to look at the imager examples. The ones given within Canvas are plenty but it, it can help you kind of increase your ambitions for the project to see what other students have done and are, and are proud of. And you'll only ever include work on your imager that you're proud of, that you don't mind future students seeing. Also on this page with past work, it gives you the link to our, our public YouTube page. And it goes right to the playlist. So what you would need to do is look for exercise one examples including the one I'm recording right now, which will be in a playlist for this semester. But we, we can find them for Fall 23, Exercise 1. Here it is. We can see it for uh, Freeware and for Adobe. So in Freeware, I do it in PhotoP. In Adobe, I do it with, with uh, Photoshop. But I'm going to be showing you how you can, we can use both of them in this first exercise. And then we can also go back to past semesters and we can find examples, right? And I've been doing this for a while, so there are lots of examples. And I always teach it a little bit differently because there's just so many different ways to go about any kind of creative work. But here is exercise one from fall 2015. And it looks like it uses Looney Tunes. And it only took three 15-minute videos to do. I've gotten wordier 
in my age. Okay, next. This is the actual assignment, right? It's the end of the module. It says when it's due. And it tells you how many points it's worth. So these exercises, they are basically pass-fail. Zero if you turn nothing in by the deadline. One if you turn something in, but it doesn't meet all the requirements yet. Two if you turn something in that meets all the requirements. And if you don't turn it in by the deadline, with our first two exercises, you can actually turn them in late and still get credit for them. That is different than assignments. Assignments, you can't. So this is our practice for getting used to submitting things. All right. Our theme is a favorite cartoon theme. It's intended to introduce you to the basic compositing of layers within the raster discipline of digital art. Raster is the vocabulary for when an image is made up of squares, made up of pixels. So pixel-based is another term for it. Bitmap is an old term for it that no longer works because bitmap means something else. It will also give you a chance to work with appropriating other people's pixels. So we're going to talk a lot about that. I call it OPP. Other people's pixels means you do not have the rights to them as they are. Just like you don't have the rights to the photographs you find in a magazine that you want to cut out. But if you can use them and create something original with them, <clears throat> which under copyright law is called transforming them, then they become yours. Right. So we're going to try to understand usage rights right from the beginning when we start using other people's pixels. And we're going to transform them into an original and aesthetically engaging artwork of our own. So even though one of the requirements of it, of this isn't that it's the most engaging art you can make it, that's always what we're going for, so that it, it pleases us. Now, this is, in analog terms, similar to collage or photo montage, right? And that was an art form that actually didn't exist until the early 20th century. And some important historical artists like Hannah Hoek in Germany in the Weimar Republic with the lead up to the, the Nazi party uh, was using this to criticize Hitler, criticize the government, along with uh, Kurt Schwitters and some other artists. Uh, an artist I like a lot, fine artist I like a lot that uses it is one named Jess. So I give you some links to their work if you're curious. Art historically, this is the kind of, well, sometimes the links break. This is the kind of collage work that you'll see in fine art museums, right? But this is not done digitally. This is all done by hand, right? Even in 1930. And then what we're going to do is do it digitally. And when we do collage or photo montage digitally, we call it compositing. Now, I try to make this clear. The legal guideline used in deciding the copyrights of such works, like how are the collages of Jess considered original works when... Ah. <laughs> there we go. So this is a contemporary collage artist. Why are these considered original works when all of these were not created by the artist? And that's because they are decontextualized enough that you won't recognize where they came from. And they're altered enough to be considered a transformed piece instead of a derivative piece, according to the law. So collage is its own unique art form where you fully own the image, whether it's traditional or digital. So it's an appropriate way to make original visual artwork. And for a definition of collage, we can go to the Museum of Modern Arts database. And you can see all of the collages in their collection, right? Kurt Schwitters, Marcel Duchamp, Pablo Picasso, Max Ernst. All of these artists are not making original materials. They are instead arranging found materials to create original pieces and it's still considered its own art form. So when we do this comp uh, digitally, we are layering images, and 
We can see this done in fine artwork with the artist Arturo Herrera, who's one of my favorites. He was born in Venezuela. He works uh, in New York. I saw his work at the, the Armory show in LA. He actually had a show here in, uh, at Ruby City last year. And this is his workspace, right? You can see that he's not digital most of the time. He cuts things out. But his work is very much in line with what we're doing with this project. This is another one of his pieces. Can you tell where he steals his imagery from? So he is ballsy, and he started this in the 1980s. He steals his imagery from the most litigious company on the planet for visual, visual rights, and that's Disney. So he likes to use kind of Disney coloring books and then turn them into his own original projects. And so far, he has n n not been successfully sued by Disney for using the imagery. Even if you know it comes from Snow White, he's taken enough of the identifying markers from it and replaced it with his own vision of content, even when it's all just directly from the Seven Dwarves, right? Arranging it and making it original is, is what this is all about. And then this, which is for um, a band, a local San Antonio band, from two of my former students. Uh, they're called Dreamboard. They're gigging this year, working on their second album. But they they used this approach to make their kind of logo for their first t-shirt. Now, my directions here are based on a band book theme. And you could follow these to know exactly what we're going to do, but I'm going to demonstrate on a favorite cartoon theme. So you don't need to worry about the band book for this, this assignment. Instead, we want to pick our favorite cartoon and we're just gonna do a Google image search for that cartoon. So a big part of this project is what's called image mining. And it's about how to find good uh, digital files to work with not just ones that you like the look of, but also are, are good quality, good resolution. So Google Images is one way we can do it, but in many ways it's the worst way to do it. But it will show you kind of the, the bounty of what's out there on the internet. So I am going to use my favorite cartoon, which is going to be Aztec Line Art. A cartoon is any kind of preparatory drawing. You know, so you can talk about Saturday morning cartoons. You can talk about Sunday comics. Uh, you can talk about children's book illustrations. As long as there's line art, like you would see in a coloring book, there should be lots online for it. Now, all of these are individually copyrighted because some artist did an interpretation from some temple or some rubbing or some uh, published book and turned it into their own artwork. Sometimes it's free clip art, sometimes it's not, right? That's one way we can look for it. Another way is if we go to the links page, off of the home page, you'll see Pixabay, right underneath our, our YouTube page. Pixabay is wonderful because it is a Creative Commons open database. So if I look for Aztec line art, I'll get stuff. I won't get nearly as many results. In fact, I'll only get one page of results. And those results, the ones we're looking for are the ones that are not sponsored, right? So you'll always see this. This is how Pixabay pays for itself. These are all ones you would pay for, and they're terrible anyway. But these are the ones that, that people donate to Pixabay for, for free use. I've got a great Aztec calendar there. I'm gonna right click and open it in a new tab and a great example of Kotalaku, the, uh, the goddess. Now, when I look at those pages, it's going to try to advertise to me. Ignore the advertising. These are, these are free for use under the Pixabay content license, which they call a Pixabay license, but it's modeled off of, of a Creative Commons open license. And all the work can be used for free without having to to give any attribution to the original designer, and we can modify and adapt these works in any ways, ways we like to make our own work. 
The one thing we can't do is we can't just copy it exactly as it is and claim it as 